Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode with my exciting free market vintage finds. I have quite quite uh, interesting interesting items for you. And this episode will be mostly treasured by those of you who are familiar with uh, vintage writing instruments. And by the way, some of the Pelican boxes in uh, this video are also present in an unboxing video on my other channel, the Pen Collector channel. But without further delay, guys, those are the items that, you, that I recently bought from flea markets. And let me tell you what they all cost me. They cost me a total of 481 lays, or the equivalent of 98.05 euros, or 106.16 US dollars. And without further delay, let us start, and probably I will leave the most treasure item last because I have something to tell you about this beautiful and incredible deep pan nibs box, box at, uh, uh, I will leave this for the last because this is one of my uh, best finds in this episode. So let's start with the more common ones and I found at the flea market, let me tell you those items, so this and this were bought at my hometown vintage flea market in Brasov, Romania. There's an entry fee of three lays or 0.61 euros or 0.66 American dollars. And probably you recognize this. I believe they are glass made uh, ink bottles and I paid for each of them five lays or the equivalent of 1.02 euros or 1.10 american dollars so beautiful beautiful and quite practical and elegant inkwells they are quite mobile as you can see and they can be placed wherever you want to use them in your desk so i will leave those aside as a bonus guys I found in a small box a uh, modern coin, and I believe it's a coin from England, and uh, it's relatively new, so I have one pound here, and on the other side of the coin we have 2016, the late uh, deceased queen, Elizabeth, and um, this is the coin. I find it quite exciting. It is the first time that I've seen a sterling pound uh, currency. I'm uh, most familiar with euros. But interesting, interesting. And uh, probably it was free. So uh, from the 480... So, so for the, from the 481 lays, you can... Um, take this out it has a value of five or six lays or approximately one euro and some uh, pocket change it's quite a nice nice coin but probably i won't sell it so it is a nice nice uh, reminder of uh, this uh, flea market episode okay i will leave it aside now i bought something and Although it is a beautiful, beautiful celluloid pocket knife, it's not in the perfect shape. You probably can see this wonderful, wonderful brown. And let me zoom on it. It's quite an interesting, interesting brown. The corkscrew here is uh, broken, as you can see. It has uh, one blade, one main blade. And I hope I won't cut myself. It has something engraved on it FSR. I'm not so sure where it came from. Maybe it's a product of the late communist Romania. And it has also one small blade here. And I love the fact that you can easily reach it by uh, pulling this uh, little sphere. 
and probably it is used for uh, opening cans and something like that and it has other stuff and it is the first time that i've seen them this one let me take it out yes this is for opening cans and opening beer bottles and i bought it for this wonderful wonderful brown celluloid guys and probably i overpaid for it i paid uh, around 30 lays or the equivalent of 6.12 euros or 6.62 american dollars so it was quite expensive usually i find uh, this with one or two euros but this time i uh, think i overpaid for this tell me what you think guys probably it compensates because this is a wonderful celluloid again a piece of it is missing but i think it is a lovely lovely item and let me put also this aside and now what was uh, i was talking about at the beginning of the video about those free pelican boxes and it's easy to distinguish between them because they have different logos and they have a different number of uh, chicks so the mother the pelican mother is feeding uh, some chicks in the nest and there are different kinds of logos i will leave uh, a image from the internet and you will see different kinds of logos and the ears they were all adopted so it's quite easy to distinguish these boxes and if you want to see in detail the video of the unboxing of uh, those four pelican vintage uh, boxes i will leave a link at the top um, right of the screen and that link will bring you to my other channel the pens collector's channel so i will tell you what i paid for them this cost me around uh, 60 lays so it's a pelican box from the 1920s and quite a rare one so 60 lays or the equivalent of 12.23 euros or 13.24 american dollars in this price is included also the shipment cost so i will leave this aside this other metallic box when i paid for this eight uh, 40 lays or 8.15 euros or 8.83 american dollars and for this beautiful typewriter ribbon uh, box it appears to be bakelite that has also inside of it some interesting deep pen nibs i paid a total of 80 lays including the shipment cost or the equivalent of 16.31 euros or 17.66 us dollars if you are interested to see the nibs included in this box check out again that uh, video i previously mentioned on the pens collector channel by the way i will leave that video also at the end of this flea market vintage finds episode let's put this aside and now guys i have a quite quite rare item you can see it's a cardboard box on it we have kohinoor i certainly believe that this is a box from the 1930s or the 1940s and why i'm exciting about this period guys you know that i live in romania and for around uh, 50 years almost 50 years uh, it had uh, been uh, governed by a communist state so most of the luxury products from the interbilic period um, between the first and the second world war were lost in time and i mean fountain pens with gold names but also some objects that were quite fragile you probably can see this is a cardboard box and this is from Ellen C. Harmouth, uh, S. R. E. Kohinor. This is a producer from Czechoslovakia. It has it had also offices in uh, Vienna and probably in Germany, but uh, I know for sure that the producer was uh, Czechos from Czechoslovakia, and they had 
sold this in the Romanian market because we have here deep pants or tokuri in Romania sortat and tray color uh, arranged in three colors and this is the cardboard box guys uh, probably one step here and another unfortunately this is ripped apart we can all distinguish also LC Harmouth. And this box, guys, was a bonus from uh, the seller. I've uh, also bought from him other two interesting boxes, which I will present to you on a future date because we did not make the real transactions. He did not have them uh, on his person. But he generously gave me this box as a bonus, as a present. So, in this box, I've deposited all the fountain pens that I found in uh, this last hunt on the flea market. And interesting, some of them were bought on the flea market in Brasov, Romania, and some of them were bought in the flea market in uh, the capital of my country, Bucharest, the flea market on Varea Cascadelor. And let me start with uh, those who were bought in uh, Brasov. Well, guys, I bought a Mont Blanc. And for those of you who know this uh, Mont Blanc roller ball, you probably recognize that this is a fake roller ball. And I know that I bought a fake. I don't encourage you to buy fakes, but I've uh, bought this to make a special video where I will compare a real roller, um, roller ball made by Mont Blanc and this fake roller ball. I think I overpaid for the fake. I paid 30 days, but I um, insisted to have it. It was quite difficult, but I had um, a little argument with the seller who insisted that this is an original and I had to show him a real original rollerball that uh, I had on my person. But uh, we negotiated and uh, I think I overpaid. I paid 30 days or 6.12 euros, or 6.62 American dollars. But again, this was bought to do a special, special worn out videos for those of you who are beginners not to buy fake products and how you can distinguish a fake product from a real product. But from the same seller, guys, I bought this wonderful thing. This is clearly a celluloid from the 1930s. It is a button filler. So, you probably can see. Button filler. And I suspect it is an Italian product from the firm Cosca. And why do, why do I say that? The only identification mark on it, let me zoom, is thermically engraved on the cap. And let me zoom. And we have definitely here, let me see, for you to see better. Let me turn it around for you to see better. We have General Wellington. And the only one I can find on the internet had also connection with Costca. So probably General Wellington is a sub-brand of Costca. And Costca was an Italian manufacturer from the 30s. Just look at this wonderfully... Uh, wonderful clip, multifaceted clip. It reminds me of the wall ever sharp from America. But uh, if we know that this is an Italian manufacturer from the 1930s, we can say for sure it was heavily influenced by the designs that were prevalent um, over the ocean in America, in the United States of America in that period. And guys, I paid for this wonderful, wonderful piece, only 100 lays, or the equivalent of 20.38 euros, or 22.07 American dollars. And by the way, because I did not tell you, this doesn't have a gold nib. It appears to have its ebonite original feeder, but this is the nib I found it in. Let me zoom on it. I Oh, sorry, it was already... Uh, in zoom motion, so Schuler 4, 
Schule means school, I believe, in German. So a steel nib, a simple nib. Maybe a replacement nib. I don't know for sure, guys. So again, I paid a lovely price for this. And the seller was kind enough to include also a bonus in uh, this nib. This is a simple nib. And it has some engravings on it. We have a V and Iridium point. Probably something made in China or in German, but it is a simple, simple steel nib. And I will surely put it to use on my uh, spare piece uh, parts in my collection, some old or new pants. This is a new nib, so probably I will fit it on a modern fountain pen. Okay, let me put this aside, guys. And let's move on. I found another Romanian pen, but um, this time is a Mako Junior. And for this Mako Junior, I paid only three lays or 0 0.61 euros or 0 0.66 American dollars. It's not in its best shape. I'm not so sure that the cap is original, but it certainly lacks the clip. Tell me clean printed junior here. But this is a interesting, interesting pen in the sense that we have this nib. Probably I will zoom on it. So we have a simple steel nib. Not so sure if it's the original nib, but it's crudely fixed out there. We have this piston filling mechanism and let me see if I can open it. Probably it is stuck there. Yes, it's stuck there. But it is an interesting, interesting design. A piston filler with an ink window made from injected plastic. And at this, this price, I could not say no. So I will put this aside here. I bought also a modern, modern Schneider product, quite uh, interesting, a school fountain pen with uh, probably its original nib over here. Let me zoom on it, guys, for you to see if we have something uh, engraved on it. No engraving, no size of the nib, but uh, the price was quite interesting, and I paid... 10 uh, lace for this, so not a large sum of money. Only 10 lace for it, or 2.04 euros, or 2.21 American dollars. And let's continue. I bought also a modern fountain pen with the gel. I'm uh, pretty sure it is produced from... Um, um, let me see what we have here. We have Igle number 1038B, Fountain Pan, Free Ink Monitoring System, and this is it, smoothly. I paid only two uh, lace for it. And guys, this is um, pretty much a one-time use product. I'm not so sure you can uh, refill it uh, if you can find refills, but I'm pretty sure when you are done uh, with it, you can throw it away. And I did not pay a large sum of money, only two lace or 0 0.41 euros or 0 0.44 American dollars. But I thought to myself that a used one, uh, it will be quite nice to show on my channel and why not to review a... Uh, uh, affordable writing instrument like this one okay let me put this aside and let's move on and i bought this interesting interesting looking ballpoint pen with uh, four colors as you can see this sign that it is present on the top of the clip this TT sign. I believe it was also on my fountain pen from Primavera. And probably they produced uh, also ballpoint pens. 
I did not pay a large sum of money and I found interesting this late 60s, early 70s design. I paid for it only three lays or 0 0.61 euros or 0 0.66 American dollars. And guy, now guys, I'm last, I'm down to the last three items. Those are the items. I bought them as a lot. I paid a total of 45 lays for each, uh, for all three of them. So for only one, and I will start with this one. This is a Romanian Flaro product, Flaro Record. Again, it's missing its uh, original clip here. And let me see if I can open it. I think, uh, oh, I don't want to break it. Already, I don't know if you can see, it has a large, large crack on the cap. And I'm not so sure how I can open it. Let me try to do it like this. Yes, it has a screwed in cap. This is the pen. It's quite interesting, guys, because it has this large ink window, which continues right here. And it has this system, this old system, which is present also on the wrap pen from the early days of Pelican. So an old, old pump. Somebody uh, made an improvisation here in order for this pump to create a vacuum. So... And no air is passing through there. But 15 lays for this. Or, by the way, guys, the equivalent. So 15 lays, the equivalent of 3.06 euros. Or 3.31 American dollars. I think it is a good, good pen. And now I have a really, really interesting one. And, guys, also 15 lays from the same lot of or 3.06 euros or 3.31 american dollars and for only three euros guys what do you think i have here i have an original mont blanc and uh, yes it's uh, the economy mont blanc it's so called um, monterosa germany based on the way it looks it is from the probably 1960s or the 1970s. What is interesting about this pen, or let's start with the downfalls, it uh, has the clip broken. It definitely doesn't have the original nib. It is fitted with the Romanian nib from Flaro, a gold-plated nib. Probably the feeder is uh, not aligned and uh, what is interesting about this is the piston is working and it has some interesting interesting ink windows probably i will do a review of this beauty and i will show you i will clean it and i will show you uh, the diamond shape uh, ink windows they are quite quite interesting so this is my Mont Blanc at an affordable, for, again, affordable, only around three euros. And the last item, guys, is a Chinese item. It came in its original box. So Superhero 332, Superhero brand fountain pen, especially processing, ensuring fluent writing, a Chinese pack, probably from the 1980s, if I'm not mistaken. Again, guys, this comes in a quite interesting caramel color. It's uh, quite uncommon to see this color on Chinese-made uh, pants. And you will see this is a really interesting uh, piece. And again, I paid for it 15 lays or 3.06 euros or 3.31 American dollars. And just look at this beauty. Let me zoom on it, guys, because this is a real, real interesting pan. And uh, some characters here on the clip, and I hope you can distinguish them. A jewel on top of the cap, an interesting uh, ring here. And this is what I was talking about. Not only the caramel color, but it has a large, large ink window, which is quite uh, a novelty when uh, we are talking about Chinese 
products and I'm trying to see if this part opens yes and it opens like this and it has the same same type of mechanism that we saw on that Romanian pen and against probably the same provenance because we have also this system of uh, uh, using uh, some uh, piece of string to create that vacuum. Interesting, interesting, interesting. This all part of the pen is transparent. So I believe I have quite, quite a rare Chinese model right over here. I can hardly wait to do its... Um, review so here we have a iridium probably point and it has that logo with the map amount with the uh, globe and this is it guys so guys this was my episode the last uh, finds on uh, free markets I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Again, for you, those of you who are passionate about writing instruments, you will find my channel, The Pen Collector, to be quite an interesting uh, channel. But, of course, for those of you who like bargains and who like vintage objects with good stories, this is the right channel for you. So, please subscribe if you want to see other uh, lucky finds. And, of course, your comments are always welcome, guys. So, if you have questions about the items I found or some other, if you want advice about scavenging for all the beautiful treasures, please uh, leave me a comment and I will answer as soon as I can. Well, I'm sorry, guys, something strange happened right uh, after I finished the video, I realized that I left uh, the goodies for, for the last and I did not present to you this wonderful, wonderful box. This Schoenacken firm, probably you know they are my favorite German manufacturers. They were quite big uh, in their time and on this box we have their factory in Bonn. Germany, you can look at the factory and you can uh, imagine the volume of products they released. Unfortunately, they went out of business in the early 1960s due to some changes, uh, radical changes in the fountain pen industry. And I mean the revolution bought by the appearance of the cheap ballpoint pen. This is a wonderful, wonderful box. This is uh, the signature of the owner of Shonaken. This is a box of uh, nibs. You will see wonderful steel nibs made for deep pens. The code of the product is 63A and the tip of the nibs, they write extra fine. Look at all the treasures they got. But this is a, a wonderful, wonderful box and in a quite a nice condition. It has some uh, wear and tear here, but I will treasure it. And again, guys, uh, if I didn't tell you, I paid for it quite a large sum of money. But believe me, this is a rare, rare find. So 70 lays or 14.27 euros or 15.45 US dollars. And the piece of resistance, guys, are the beautiful, beautiful nibs. Uh, I think I, they are around 100 pieces, but look at the pristine shape they are in. I will zoom on it, guys, and I will try to present it like this. So what do we have engraved on it? We have number 510EFA Clark Hoon and Company VN. Oh, interesting. We we don't have Shonaken on them. This is the first one that I saw. No. So, I don't have Shonaken nibs inside of it. I'm sorry, guys. I thought there were also Shonaken nibs. But they are definitely also Shonaken nibs because I 
see I, I see there a bone in him. Let me take this out. And definitely this is a Shonaken Mima. I'm sorry about this, guys. Let's see. Yes. Shonaken 63A AF bone. So different, different types of nibs. But I think they are all from uh, German manufacturers. I don't have the time to show them all. Probably I will do a special episode with uh, this box on the pen uh, collector channel because this is a really, really a rare, rare find in the world of those who collect uh, vintage writing instruments. So I will move on with the ending of the video, guys. I'm sorry for this uh, little mistake. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode and I hope you like this Shonaken uh, box. Please uh, continue watching the video. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your review. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. I will see you again right here with other flea market vintage finds. Till then, bye-bye and God bless you all, my dear friends.